All right, guys, so here we have Miles Kirby. He just topped first place in our MSU Yu-Gi-Oh! Club meeting. So, Miles, what did you run today? Today I was running Old Faithful Birds. Ooh, all right, let's get started. All right, so I have three Rabina, uh, pretty standard, three Eaglin, pretty standard, and then one Stree and one Taken. This is a little bit different since the last time I played Birds. Um, I played Birds, like, pretty much from, like, uh, May, June area till um, about late August, early September. Then I ended up selling off the deck, uh, traded it for a Baron because I got bored. Um, realized that I missed winning. I missed winning at Locals. I switched over to playing Pendulum Magician for a bit and then Eldlich, and it got to the point where I was like, all right, I kind of need a meta contender again. Um, and I'm not playing Eldlich because it's kind of gross. So we're back with birds. I got the deck last week at my other locals. And uh, yeah, the only thing that's, I mean, there's a couple of things that have changed since I last played it, but mainly like one of the big changes is you only run one Stree. Um, two Stree used to be like pretty solid, but I think people have kind of just cut down on Stree because it's it's not as necessary anymore. You kind of need cards like Crow more as opposed to something like Stree because you have to hit stuff like Tier as opposed to just, um, you know, stuff like back when Therians were legal, you'd hit the Therians with Stree, and that's not a very, like, time-sensitive hit. Um, and then you run the two M-Pen. For a while, when I ran the deck, I only ran one M-Pen. Then I realized that two was way, way, way better. You need the second one, because, uh, you, like, if you ever go past, like, turn three, which you do a lot with this deck, uh, your Eaglin will get to be dead if you don't run the second M-Pen. And like you need to, sometimes to have the second M-Pen, even if you're not gonna summon it, just to search it off the Eaglin to resolve the Eaglin, because you need to search to resolve the normal summon. Um, yeah, other than that, we have the one crow that you search off the Rabina. Uh, you don't really play more than one because you can search it. And if you're going first, you're going to get it probably before tier does any summoning. So you don't really need to have it in your opening hand. It's nice, but you don't need it. Um, and the one Ryza, so Ryza and Apex are your other big birds. Uh, the Ryza is obviously for turn two if you're going first to clear boards. Um, and then the Apex is if you're scared of stuff like evenly matched or if they have one blowout card. Um, two barrier statue. So uh, this is something that's also different. You used to just run one, now you run two because I feel like a lot of people that are playing Fwanderies have kind of realized that normal summoning barrier statue or even having the barrier statue and the trap card is really powerful even if you have nothing else. If you have no other cards that you can play on, if your hand is super dead or bricky or if you get hand trapped, you need the barrier statue. It at least forces the opponent to skip their uh, main phase one and their battle phase. Uh, so you probably won't die if you normal summon this. And then uh, past that, we got the three shifter. It's a classic. Yeah. So my original stance on shifter, especially back when the deck first came out and I was playing it and like, Nah, I mean, I wasn't playing it when it first came out, but when I was playing it in like May through, you know, about, about the summer, was that Shifter did not need to get banned. I was like, there's way better cards in the game that need to get banned. And I still think that Konami, where the hell is mine on the ban list? Um, but people, like, I can see a much stronger argument for banning Shifter now that it's getting abused by other decks. Like, originally, this was the only deck that was really playing it that was meta relevant. And then you had like Medulches that were playing it, but now stuff like Exosisters is playing it. They're able to play it. Um, and then uh, there's other a lot of other rogue decks that have started uh, teching this in. Just so it, it's like you see it a lot more now, and it really sucks to play against it if you're not playing a deck that you know doesn't lose to it. So yeah, I can see a much better argument for it to be banned or at least limited. Um, map, we play this at three, and then the terraforming to search it. This card is insane. Um, I mean, if you if you have map and a baby bird, you have full combo on your first turn. You're probably gonna win. Uh, I'm actually, so I, I traded this card away when it was like 13 a piece or maybe 12 a piece. And then it shot up at like more than doubled in value. And so that really sucked when I was buying the deck back. Luckily everything else tanked in value because of, uh, you know, them being reprinted, but this one like doubled in value. So I, I basically bought the deck back for the same price that I sold it for, even after everything else got reprinted, which really sucks. Uh, then you play the one unexplored wins. Some people used to run two. You don't really want to run this at two. I don't even side the second one anymore. Just because, like, it's... I mean, it's really good, but it's not, like, your game winner. Um, it's 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 sort of like a win more card, I feel like. Uh, then, three Prosperities. So, I mean, if you don't have Prosperity, you do Extrav, and it's literally the same thing. You just do a slightly different extra deck. 
Just more um, consistent. Yeah, prosperity adds consistency. So I ran the prosperities when I went to my last regional, which was like end of August. And um, that was like pretty much the last time I ran this deck. But I ran the prosperities when I went to my last regional at end of August. And all of my prosperity hits were really, really bad off the top of the deck. I didn't do great at that regional. But uh, I mean, you have to run it. It's really good. Like it, it did really well today. It did well uh, with the last locals that I played this deck at. And then the three duality, because even though it's like slightly worse prosperity, um, you never special summon. So it's just like, I mean, it, it's like a better upstart goblin in this deck. Um, you main deck, three dark ruler, no more. Um, I mean, honestly, like this is probably the one card that I most consider switching to the side deck or cutting. Uh, dark ruler, no more is really good, but I feel like dark ruler, no more is only insane if you have like, uh, unexplored wins in hand or if you uh, have a bearer statue in hand. Because otherwise, you're gonna go through your combo and your opponent's probably going to um, like have some sort of hand trap or something to stop you from searching the unexplored wins. And then you don't really have anything to stop their follow-up turn. And uh, Flandry's just like suffers. Like it's, you really only end, especially if on your first turn, you only end on like one big bird, which is usually uh, M-Pen, unless your hand's insane. And, um, yeah, like M Pen can attack over like one thing, but if you don't have this and you don't have this to stop follow up, it struggles with clearing boards a little bit. I mean, you need this to play sometimes, but it also struggles with clearing boards. So sometimes the Dark Ruler will negate monsters, and then the monsters will survive till your opponent's next turn, and that really sucks. Um, two Book of Moon. Uh, so I I used to play this as card at three. Honestly, I probably would play a third if I had you know room, but I, I like the consistency more than playing a third. Um, I mean, it's still really good. There's still target negates in the game, and sometimes it's good if your opponent has, like, one problematic monster, like a, um... I mean, I'm sure this is going to be good when, uh, Cash Tira becomes, like, Tier 1, because you just book their, uh, monster that, like, locks out your zones, and you don't lose to the one that vanishes, uh, from Grave anyways. So, this card's going to be good. Um... But yeah, I mean, I mean, Book of Moon still like wins games on occasion. You're playing against like a Link deck, like Salads or Marincess. You book their like normal summon, and, and they could just kind of lose on that. Uh, the one called by the grave. So, um, you this is kind of a flex spot as well, but you play it because you know hand traps still suck sometimes, even with all these cards that dodge hand traps. And then uh, here's my uh, spicy goo, my secret goo. My uh, dimension fissure, dimensional fissure. It's not. It's not even. It's not even anything crazy. It's not even any spice or goo. It's just uh, like decks used to play this in the side deck. Sometimes uh, I didn't really have anything else that I wanted to put in the main deck, so I put this in the main deck, and I haven't resolved it once since picking up the deck again. But uh, I mean, in theory, it's a good card. Uh, and then the one trap card. Uh, you have to run this. It's. So I actually do use the Book of Moon or Book of Eclipse effect uh, in the grave sometimes, but often if you have D Shifter, this is getting banished anyways, and then you're just adding it back off Taken. So um, yeah, that's the main deck. Uh, let's go on to extra deck. So for extra deck, I was running the six Prosperity targets, which are Farajit, Omen, Adagnister, Omega. Garura and Atis. Um, I mean, these are pretty much your six that you're picking every time because, like, these are really, really all matchup specific. They're really only for, like, the Dogmatica matchups. Um, I mean, there I saw a build earlier that was, I think it was Chalice Slime monthly or something, and they were running uh, one Ecclesia, three of the uh, Search spell, whatever, that's Nadir Servant, and then uh, one Punishment or three Punishment, I don't remember. And then that made like this whole package way better. Um, and I, I mean, I, I've considered testing that, but right now I just like the pure consistency build as opposed to running stuff like Dogmatica. So that's your prosperity targets. And you have the one Anima, the one Link Karibo. Um, this is just for getting like bodies on board, uh, like special summon bodies on board. And then the one Phoenix, the one Unicorn. I mean, you'll win most of the time without ever going into any of this stuff. You have the one Soldier of Chaos, this is for problematic monsters. And then the one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, this is also for problematic monsters. Um, you'd like basically never summon the, any of these cards, but they're there in case you need them. 
And then probably the thing in the extra deck you'd use the most is the Zeus package, but still like never make it. So, I mean, that's the extra deck. Uh, side deck, today I ran three Gadarla. So I played this exact same deck, the exact same list, except for two small changes uh, at my, it was my OTS championship that they had um, on Thursday this past week. And I played, like they said, this exact same list, but two small changes. One, I was an idiot at that, and I was building the deck really quickly before I went to that Locals, and I played three Lava Golem instead of three Gadarla, not realizing how much Lava Golem conflicts with Flunder, because Lava Golem takes up your normal summon, and you need your normal summon in this deck to win. So uh, that was really stupid to me, but luckily Lava Golem never really came up. But you run the three Gadarla. Um, I was considering running Gamaciel, but the only reason you run this is in case you draw this, off the top deck on like your turn two or turn three or something, and you already have a barrier statue up, you can still use this to clear your opponent's board, uh, even under barrier statue. So that's why you run the wind one. Uh, three Raigeki, this would probably be Lightning Storm if I had Lightning Storm, but Raigeki is really good, especially right now. I feel like there's a lot of boards that don't end on Omni Negates, so you can just wipe their whole board. Um, three Cosmic Cyclone, one Feather Duster. Uh, bring Feather Duster back to more than one. <laughs> Uh, the Cyclone is, and Feather Dusters are for the back row decks or the Mystic Mind decks. Um, then the last one, last five spots I have are three D Barrier and two Trap Trick. So the D Barrier was the other change that I had from my list on Thursday. I was running the three Feather Storm. Uh, I would run the Feather Storm, and I, I definitely don't recommend D Barrier. I would definitely run the Feather Storm, but I didn't have Feather Storm today. I was borrowing it on Thursday, and the person I borrowed it from wasn't here today. So. Uh, take out D barrier, put in three feather storm if you're building this deck, and then two trap trick is just extra consistency because if you activate trap trick, you set the feather storm and then resolve the feather storm. Most of the time, that's a game winner. Feather storm is it's a broken card. Um, like I, with the first time that my uh, buddy who was playing harpies against me, Ethan, he was playing harpies. He activated feather storm against me, and I had to read that card like three times because I was like, there's no way it says you know, every monster effect. I, I thought it was like, oh, monster effects on the field, and it was just like a one-time skill drain or something. He goes, no, it's monster effects on the field, and in hand, and in graveyard, and in banish. It's any monster effect you activate. So, yeah, that card is insane. Um, but, yeah, Featherstorm is insane. Uh, the This deck, I, I think, is really good. It's probably, out of, like, the three, like, tier two decks right now, which are, like, Exorcist or Math Mech and this, this is probably the best one. This is probably the one with the most longevity as well. Uh, I also bought Exorcisters. I'm going to be testing those. I really like Exorcisters, how they function at least. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far I'm undefeated with this deck. Um, I only tied once at the OTS Championship. That's why I got second place at that. But I mean, this deck is fairly budget. It's really good. I, I'm glad that we're finally getting to a point where like you can play meta-relevant winning decks and not have to spend 200 plus dollars on them. Uh, I hope that Konami keeps moving us in that direction, keeps reprinting cards and keeping the meta cheap. Um, and I mean, that, that that's about it. All right, got any shout outs? Yeah, shout out to the MCU Yu-Gi-Oh Club. Shout out to Gal for building this uh, sweet custom deck box uh, with MSU branding, 3D printed. Uh, go ahead and contact Gal to buy one soon. <laughs> No, but he, he will be doing custom orders for these probably. It's entirely 3D printed. You can get whatever you want inlaid on the top. Um, and then it's got a door to take out the card tray. And then this slides off on the top tray like a dice tray. So if you want to support the club or support any of our uh, staff members, be sure to check this out. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's about it. All right. Thanks, Miles. Thanks.